teams squaring off Baylor and Texas Tech. And you're watching the Big 12 on ESPN from United Supermarkets Arena here in Lubbock. And the Texas Tech Red Raiders, number 11 in the country, hosting number seven, Baylor. Take a standings right now in the Big 12, arguably the top conference in the country. So much depth and toughness. Kansas leaders of the pack at 10 and two. Baylor right on their heels at nine and three. And how about Texas Tech? Eight and four in third place. They were unranked preseason. Welcome courtside, John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. This should be a good matchup. All right, let's start with Baylor. Jonathan Chamochachua, who ended up having a season-ending knee injury on Saturday in the win, had surgery yesterday. Fran Fraschilla, the Baylor Bears lose a lot when they lose every day, John. Exactly, and it's not the stats, John. It's the spirit, the effort, the energy that's been missing. They'll miss it, they'll have to make up for it, but they will try to. And on the other side, how about Mark Adams replacing Chris Beard, who's off to Texas, doing a great job there. Chris Beard left behind a culture of toughness defense, in part because Mark Adams was one of those architects with Beard. This place is jam-packed and they're fired up. And their biggest fan is sitting just to our left. And Patrick Mahomes in the house. They just showed him on the Jumbotron and the place went crazy. Ready to tip, Baylor wins it and we are underway. And Fran, right away, I will steal the note you gave to me the first time in history, these two teams have matched up with each of them in the top 11. Amazing, 140 games. Now remember, jo Jonathan did not start, he came off the bench, so this is Baylor's starting five. Grant, I didn't see what happened, Mahomes was blocking me. Yeah, missed shot, okay. Patrick sitting down now. I got you, John. A little step through, and a bucket right there. And there is T.J. Shannon with the deuce. Remember, T.J. Shannon, has been out for much of January and February, nursing an injury. And right off the start, watch him get downhill with that left hand. And he's gonna get a chance to get an old fashioned three. And John, let's, let's make this point too. Texas Tech without Kevin McCullough tonight, who suffered an ankle injury in that win over TCU. Yeah, right now out with an ankle problem. He missed time earlier in the year with an ankle injury, but it was the opposite ankle. Texas Tech as good defensively as you'll see in the country, like everybody in this league, lots of switching at four and five spots. Akinjo, and a feed down low, Meyer, ball fake, puts it up and in. Matt Meyer loves to work behind the defense on the baseline. Baylor's a really good cutting tee behind the ball with Meyer. Sohan and uh, Kendall Brown. Both of these teams are excellent in the half court. Watch the switching. The idea is to keep the ball in front of you. Warren couldn't get it to go, and now back the other way. Here comes Baylor. Akinjo leaves it for Meyer. His three won't fall. Rebound, Thamba. Remember, Flo played 30 minutes the other day after Jonathan Chamachacho was hurt the most in his career. Pinchy, a little hesitation. He's got O'Banner on him. Kicks to Brown. And the rebound is tracked down. Flagler, three, got it. Adam Flagler also injured lately. Starting to regain his mojo. 15 points a game since he returned to the lineup. Flagler's missed time with a knee issue. LJ Pryor, another guy who has been out with a foot problem. There's Shannon. And Brown rebounds. Yeah. Kendall Brown, one of the top freshmen in the country. And I think John, he's going to get a chance to expand his game down the stretch of his freshman year. He's only going to be here for a year. There's Brown on the baseline. Rattles out. O'Banner the board. Remember, Tech plays without a point guard. Basically, guard, big guards, small forwards. 
Really not even a center. Adonis Arms. Got it. What a story that kid has been. Four different schools, each time moving up the ladder. Now a mainstay on a top 11 team in the country. It's a whiteout here in Lubbock. And this place is loud. That should be a foul, and it is. So I believe they get, yep, Davion Warren with that foul. Baylor Bears led by Scott Drew, defending national champs, 20th season at Baylor. And we've documented the fact that, or 19th at Baylor, 20th overall as a head coach. And we've documented the fact that, I mean, the job that he's done at Baylor has been... It's the greatest rebuilding job in basketball history in the NCAA. You, you know, you can argue that Bill Snyder at Kansas State did something similar. But there's no question that Scott Drew in the rebuilding, given where they were, it, it already speaks for itself. We've talked about it many times. Beat inside, Sohan kick out. Nice. Good look, yep. and Thamba the throw down. Well, the reason they got that ball is because they got it down on the baseline again behind the defense. Clarence Nadoli has checked in for Texas Tech Shannon. And Brown with the rebound. Well, one of the things that they will miss Baylor without Chumba Chachua, the rebound. Sohan pulls down a rebound. Akinjo got it. Well, well Akinjo's had tailbone and ankle issues, but that's a big shot. Big shot. He played really well against Texas. Shannon can't answer. That one tipped out. Nadoli tracks it down. Miller by four here in the early going. Bacho inside, and the freshman gets that to go. He's played in every game this year, and he is going to be tremendous down the road. Young man from France. The Dolny steals the pass. Bacho hangs. No call. And it's Baylor back the other way with a two point advantage. John, what you love about Texas Tech is Santos Silver, Bryson Williams, they can guard guards. They're a versatile defense. On the free throw line, Thamba rolls it home. How about that? Phil Thamba. Had his first double-double of his career Saturday, and all of a sudden he's going to be asked to play more and more minutes. It's exactly what he wanted as a senior. Nadoli from the corner. Tipped out, Nadoli gets it back. <laughs> Baylor by four. And here in Lubbock, Fran Fraschilla, a great atmosphere. And the last time these two teams met, Baylor did not have a loss. They were the number one team, and they built a big lead. In fact, Baylor had a 15-point lead late in the first half, and then things finally started to turn for Texas Tech as they ended up getting a big game from Adonis Arms as he ended up coming up with the big game. Ultimately, Akinjo, the final shot. Wooden fall, 65-62, and no T.J. Shannon in that game, by the way. Exactly, and they still put five players in double figures that game. And that was the first loss for Baylor. They've suffered some injuries and obviously uh, lost their mojo a little bit. But I got to tell you, they look pretty good Saturday in blowing out Texas at home. Back to Tech for a second is the idea that you know, you, you think about Texas Tech and the idea that they won back-to-back -back games against Kansas and against Baylor. The Kansas win was without both Shannon and McCuller, and then the win without McCuller.
All right, Tom Hart, thanks very much. And here in Lubbock, United Supermarkets Arena, Big 12 basketball, John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. Baylor off to the 12-8 lead, 14-18 to go here in the first half. And now both these teams a bit banged up. Let's start on the Baylor side, obviously playing without Jonathan Chamochachua, not just the rest of the regular season, but the entire year. And a guy who's a big time defender, a leader. Jonathan Chamochachua suffered that injury on Saturday, non contact injury against Texas. He had surgery yesterday at the Carroll Clinic in Dallas, repaired multiple ligaments in his left knee. He is said to be in great spirits, and he talked to the team today, so we certainly wish him the best. No question. He's the heart and soul, the spirit of this program. I've, had, I've talked to the uh, coaching staff. Scott Drew, many of the head coaches in the Big 12 and around the country called to send their best. Uh, I talked to Pastor Weibel in Waco, who is a big part of their program. He said 100 people came up to him on Sunday at church and just said, Please tell John we're praying for him. Everybody around the country who loves basketball is thinking about this young guy. We know he's watching tonight in Waco. We wish you the best, John. We know you're coming back strong. I talked with Dave Snyder, the head athletic trainer, and he made the point that every other trainer in the Big 12 and trainers from other conferences texted, called to check in to let him know that these guys were all thinking about him. Coaches calling Scott Drew. I mean, again, we wish him nothing but the best, and uh, yeah, that's hard when a young man suffers an injury like that. Now, Flo Thamba is a guy that they're going to need to step up because for Chavo Chachua and Thamba, they're kind of the, the two-headed monster. That's right. They've pretty much been joined at the hip the last couple years, having known each other since, since basketball without borders about five years ago. But Thamba will play. Here's the deal, John. Thamba's got to play five minutes more. Meyer's got to play five minutes more. The two freshmen play five minutes more. That's the 20 minutes that they'll they'll get out of them. And then they got to play with John Spirit. And uh, we'll see if that happens. But I'm optimistic about those two freshmen really stepping in. Both of those kids are going to be in the NBA. They're just going to have to grow up a little sooner than they thought. LJ Cryer in the game for Baylor. He's missed the last five games due to a recurring foot injury. Really been about pain. He's now missed seven overall following the offseason foot surgery. But a guy averaging basically 14 points a game is their top scorer. Well, the last six games prior to the injuries, he was averaging 19 and shooting 50% from three. And while we're on the injury report, remember, if you're just joining us, Kevin McCullough, who is uh, the heart and soul of the Texas Tech team, out tonight with an ankle injury. That time of year. Kick to the corner. And Cryer right there, able to get that to go. <laughs> I'd say he's back. That's not bad. He had made 20 of his last 41 threes prior to the injury. And you're looking at a young man that's one of the great scorers in history of Texas. And this guy, Bryce Williams, has improved as much as anybody not only in the Big 12, but in the country from the start of the year, John. He has been absolutely on a roll, the transfer from UTEP. Yeah, Bryson Williams averaging over 13 points a game, but in Big 12 play, it's almost 16 a game. Against great defenses. Brown inside, and he's fouled. And Kendall Brown will go to the line and shoot two. The foul on Malik Wilson. Now Bryson Williams started his career at fresno state for rodney terry followed him to utep but did not follow him to texas as rodney became an assistant coach of the longhorns back on campus and this kid has fit right in in the south plains so changes the bears who have hit their last three field goals. Dale Bonner checking in. And here's something that hasn't happened much this year. Jeremy Sohan will go to the five spot to replace Flo Thamba right now. So a smaller but a very athletic Baylor team right now on the floor. Maybe 
John Warren giving off Adonis Arms. Texas Tech. You look at the adjusted rate stats, one of the top defensive teams in all of college basketball. Top three, according to Ken Palm. And Baylor slacking off their number 12. Right for the loose ball, rebound pulled down by Bryson Williams. Pretty amazing when you think about Texas Tech. They were unranked coming into the year. Joe Lenardi says if they win this game tonight, they'll be on the two line. It's amazing. Yep. Nadolny aggressively to the basket. Wouldn't fall. No foul called. And the other way, Cryer up ahead. Bonner now Meyer. A lot of dribbling there by Matt Meyer. Too much. Yeah, that ball's got to move. It can't be stuck in his hands. Good feed inside and a foul as Bryson Williams absorbs the contact. Baylor leading it 16-13 here in Lubbock. Big 12 basketball. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Philip 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. People count on Spectrum to keep them connected to what matters most. Our commitment runs deep with over 93,000 employees and a network almost 800,000 miles long. Our commitment, it's local too. We live and work in the communities we serve cheer for the same teams, shop at the same stores, and work hard to deliver the best internet, TV, and mobile services. Because, well, we count on them too. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. People ask me all the time, how come the best crawfish come from Louisiana? You know what I say? Clean water and blackjack mud. Louisiana gold as far as you can see. These crawfish get way down in the mud where it's cool and keeps them fat and happy. Each season, we catch millions of pounds, and they go straight to H-E-B. Now, this is my Louisiana gold. Mmm, thoughts said bon. This is the best live crawfish department at H-E-B. No store does more than my H-E-B. Back here in Lubbock, John Chomby, Fran Priscilla, joined courtside by that guy. Patrick Mahomes in the house, and getting a chance to watch this Texas Tech Red Raiders, and, uh, I mean, the ovation he got as he came into the building and has been, yeah, he's getting right now is pretty cool. Yeah, he, uh, 40, 4,800 yards this year, 37 touchdowns. He did play one baseball game at Texas Tech, and the rumor is his ERA is at infinity. Oh. And, and listen, I'm only saying that because his dad was an outstanding major leaguer. Dad was a really good reliever. And, and Patrick's a really good NFL quarterback on a Hall of Fame trajectory. So, Final college start, I'm told, was against Baylor. He went for 586 <laughs> yards and six touchdowns. Can I tell you something? The very first snap I remember him taking as a Texas Tech quarterback, he fumbled the snap and then threw an interception. So it went from that to 500 yards before he left. I don't want to rain on your parade. I'm just telling you, this is a, this is fact. He's as good as it gets. Yes, he is. Bryson Williams knocks it down. And we see this in the league, a little token pressure, but they'll go back to man-to-man -to -man and try to choke the daylights of this, out of this Baylor offense. Dale Bonner mentioned into the game, the D2 transfer, that a guy, I don't know that they actually at the beginning of the year intended that he was gonna play for him. It might just sit, hit the weight room, and that from the corner from Pryor, and he knocks that down. John, everybody in the league, in order to attack that kind of defense with five defenders on the ball side, you must skip the ball to the other side. Everybody does it because it's the only or easiest way to move the ball side to side. Sohan fights for the rebound, loose ball, and possession arrow, it belongs to Texas Tech. Now both these teams 
have a lot of grit. There's no question. I want you to watch this, John. You see where the defense is? Watch all the white jerseys. You must skip the ball against these help side defenses. And right there, you see Sohan almost gets a screen. But how about LJ Cryer? Does he look like he's been out five or six games? Shooting it great. Oh, man. Over 50% over the last seven that he's played. Williams bowls his way inside. Yep. Puts it in. We saw that at Kansas. We've seen that throughout the Big 12. He has really become nearly unguardable. Maybe the best big man in the Big 12. Especially on the offensive end. Watch these defenses. They'll switch. They'll keep the ball in front. Sohan not able to hit. There's that skip. Warren will try. And Thamba eventually able to corral it. Will Cryer's feeling it this time off the mark. But there is Thamba underneath. And a shot blocked. Nice. Good look. Yep. And Grayson Williams to throw down. They got that because they pushed it, got it to the corner, and they really broke down that barrel of deep Baylor defense in the half court before they could get set. Good ball movement. Well, Banner rebounds the miss. And then they throw it away. Tied at 19 here in Lubbock. And you'll see this ball come out of the corner. Watch the ball movement, the drive downhill. And that happens because those gold jerseys were not locked in on ball side and they were able to get that penetration and dish. He likes it. No doubt. Taylor's missed its last four field goals. Akinjo handles here. Watch Santo Silver. He has no problem guarding Akinjo. Yep, there you go. On the final play of the game in Lubbock, remember, he was the guy that shut down Akinjo. Yeah, we got another full day of college basketball on Saturday on ESPN and the app. It starts at noon Eastern, and then our late games at 6. Duke and Florida State from Cameron. After that, it'll be Kansas on the road in Morgantown taking on West Virginia. And it all wraps up with number three, Arizona, playing host to Oregon, our West Coast primetime game. And that one will not count. Well, they're going to count no, the basket first, and then are they going to go take a look and see if there was a shot clock violation by rule, they can check this. I would have been able to tell, but there's a big, tall quarterback <laughs> that stands up every time the ball is on that side. Mm -hmm. But Keith Kimball will get a look at it right here. Pretty easy. He says, no way. So they're not going to count it. Ball in his hands, 0-0. Quick re review. So good job there by Keith Kimball, Bert Smith, and Mike Greenstein. I love when you say that the Big 12, I say it, the Big 12 is the best officiating in the country, and all the fans get on you, and I'm like, well, you're a fan. If it's your team, you don't think the officials are any good at all. That's a, that's a travel. And so it'll be a Baylor, or I should say a Texas Tech turnover, Baylor basketball, 8.51 to go. John, you mentioned Dale Bonner. He really was going to probably redshirt this year. The last six games, he's playing 26 minutes a game. Former Division II player at Fairmont State, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Pincho, hesitation. Gosh, look at this defense. Yeah. Bonner. And they went possession arrow. Bonner wanted a timeout. 
Probably lucky he didn't get it because they had possession. Yep. And he tried to call it, but before he could call it, the officials thought that the ball was tied up. Watch Bonner slip right now. And if you're Dale Bonner, you, you, you almost need very, very few players, John, of this savvy, that you know which way the possession arrow is. Because if you do know, you just hold the ball, let them tie you up, and you keep it without wasting right. timeout. Very few guys will have that much basketball IQ anywhere. Uh oh. Shannon steps in the passing lane. Shannon the throw down. The distance on Baylor's passes the last few minutes have been elongated, and it's allowing the Red Raiders to jump those lanes. Good move by Akinjo. Baylor back the other way. It's a little drought for Baylor. They had scored a field goal on about three and a half minutes. Akinjo closes on arms. Santo Silva. And a foul on Flo Thamba. Well, Terrence Shannon has been in and out of the lineup this year. He's missed 11 games, but when he's back, he's dynamic, especially in the open court. The Tennessee Lady Vols, a program that's long been considered basketball royalty. Tennessee is the fourth back-to-back -back championship. But for the last decade, Don Staley and the Gamecocks have joined the elites of the game. SEC tournament title, national champion. College game day, covered by State Farm courtside in Columbia as two of college basketball's most iconic brands collide. Yeah, pretty amazing matchup we got for you Sunday afternoon on ABC as Aaliyah Boston and number one South Carolina taking on George Horston and the 12th ranked Lady Balls. And as mentioned, Gabe Day will be there. Bell Duncan, Rebecca Lobo, Carolyn Peck, Andrea Carter, and Holly Rowe. Great job that uh, Kelly Harper's done at Tennessee, the former point guard. Kenjo drills that one. Baylor's done a nice job of uh, keeping this crowd out of the game. Some timely baskets. Defense pretty good. Both teams locked in, John, defensively, that's for sure. Santos Silva working on Sohan. Arms ball fake gets into the paint. Off the glass, it's good. It's amazing. What a, what a transformation. When this kid tried out, yeah, tried out at Mesa Community College, he got one of the last practice jerseys. It was number 42, and he said, today to us, it fit like a dress, but I wanted to make the team. Mesa to D2 to D1, and now on a top 11 team. The other part that's amazing is he came off the bench last year for Winthrop, and he's starting for Texas Tech. Crazy. Yep. He averaged 10 points a game at Winthrop. They went to the NCAA, played for Pat Kelsey, and he had 10 against Villanova. But you know what he is? He's unentitled. These transfers that came here are bus league guys. They're in the vans, they're in the buses, they're not on the charters. They appreciate being at this place. Bryson Williams. You see all those transfers. How good is this kid, man? He is hard to guard. O'Banner tries from three, and Sohan, Jeremy Sohan, his parents are here taking in the freshman's second college game. Well, it's the second time they've watched, but he's had a really nice freshman year. I love those two freshmen. Brown and Sohan have been getting better and better for Scott Drew, and they're going to have to now. Shot clock is at six, Cryer. To the corner, Sohan, oh, big three. Oh yeah, there are a number of NBA scouts here tonight to get a look at both of those guys. And the crazy thing about those two kids, they don't turn 19, both of them, until next May. 
Their futures are so bright. The banner inside. Sohan pulls down a rebound. Look at that pass. And inside and a foul, the Red Raiders. We said this, John, without Jonathan Chamo Chachua, we're going to see these two freshmen grow up over the next month. Watch the corner J by Sohan, knocking it down, and uh, you know mom and dad are loving it. Anetta on the left, sitting down on the right is Victor with the beard. And remember, his mom played basketball in Oklahoma. That's where Jeremy was born. And she took him back to England, but he is Polish. And he is the youngest player to ever play on the Polish national team at 17. What a future. Did the trip over from England, Milton Keynes, England. South Central. About an hour north, north of London, right? All that switching on those triple weaves. The ball stays in front. Shot clock is at nine. Feed inside. Williams gets fouled, and Bryson Williams will go to the line. That's what we call doing your work early, and Kendall Brown did not do that there. Bryson Williams rolled hard. Kendall allowed Bryson to get great position at the rim. When I think of Fresno, not a, not a lot of big names, John. You know, the Lopez twins, the Pondexter brothers through the years. This kid, Bryson Williams, the all-time leading scorer in the history of the city of Fresno, California. I've got to say it's a credit to Mark Adams because, I mean, he did look at transferring to Texas. He did. And you know, when he visited Texas Tech, they brought the Texas Tech bus to the airport and the entire coaching staff picked him up at the airport in the, that Texas Tech charter bus that they use on road trips. Miller's hit three straight field goals, make it four in a row. A Kinchill to deuce timeout, Red Raiders. And we'll be back in 30 seconds. People count on Spectrum to keep them connected to what matters most. Our commitment runs deep with over 93,000 employees and a 5-5. Five, five. How about the journey for this guy? You talk about a guy with some grit from a coaching standpoint and a head coach at Clarendon, Wayland Baptist, all over the place. Eventually took time off was the GM of a minor league hockey team, then was the head coach at Howard College, went with Chris Beard, was a Little Rock assistant coach, and then moved on to become Chris Beard's top assistant with the Red Raiders, and then stayed put as the head guy. Well, he won a national championship at Howard, and he also had a guy there by the name of Jay Crowder, who turned out to be a pretty good NBA player. But in these parts of the country, everybody knows Mark Adams. There's not a basketball coach in the state of Texas that doesn't have respect for Mark Adams over the last 30 years. He's in a num number of Hall of Fames, John. Juco Hall of Fame, Wayland Baptist Hall of Fame. He's a tremendous coach, great defensive mind. Once offered an assistant coaching job at the Chicago Bulls after that great run by Texas Tech to the Final Four. There's that cut and a great block. Great backside cut and a great reaction by Texas Tech. Save the basket. O'Banner oh, inside block. Again, can't put it home, but he gets fouled. Kevin O'Banner to the line, and he'll shoot two. Let's go back and watch that last play, John. This is a great cutting league because of the defenses. Look at that cut from the backside. And that's a heck of a play by O'Banner. Terrence, Terrence Shannon. Shannon, man. Neither of these teams shoots free throws particularly well. In fact, for Texas Tech 
as a team at 69 percent. And that's about 241 nationally. Banner gets them both. Santos Silva will check back in, as will Malik Wilson. You mentioned they're sort of point guard list. If there's one guy that fits that role specifically, it would be Malik Wilson. Yes, I agree, John. I remember when we saw him early in the season, he was hurt. There's a great move by Sohan. From Akinjo, nice feed. Yeah. Uh, James Akinjo, we, did, we, not, we were not sure he was going to play tonight. But he has definitely had they put the burners on. Wilson goes baseline, trying for Santos Silva. Nice pass. So and up ahead for Meyer and one. Great basketball. Sohan with the vision came out of the pack. Meyer ran the lane, and it's going to be an end one. And yet they missed the big fella, JTT. But watch how they're picking up the pace. Meyer to the hoop and one. Spectrum Business Internet and Phone are built to meet the needs of your business. You need fast speeds to keep up with all the new ways you're interacting with customers. And we get that you need low prices to keep costs down. No business wants to be locked into a contract, so we don't have them. Choose Spectrum Business, the best internet and phone with fast starting speeds at a great low price, all without ever signing a contract. That's what you want and what your business needs. No nonsense, just business. Spectrum Business. People ask me all the time, how come the best crawfish come from Louisiana? You know what I say? Clean water and blackjack mud. Louisiana gold as far as you can see. These crawfish get way down in the mud where it's cool and keeps them fat and happy. Each season we catch millions of pounds and they go straight to H-E-B. Now this is my Louisiana gold. Mmm, thoughts and bon. This is the best live crawfish department at H-E-B. No store does more than my H-E-B. Guys, we'll look forward to hearing from you at the half. Kevin, Sean, and Seth. And here is Matt Meyer. Meyer, native of Austin, Texas, played his high school ball at Westlake. Knocks down that one, so a three-point play, and all of a sudden, Baylor is up by eight. Yes, defense, you know, we know Texas Tech struggles to score at times. Bryson Williams has 11. They've got to play through him more, especially with the smaller Baylor lineup. Shannon with Brown on it. Shannon to the basket, off the glass. Offensive foul. Yep, he went left. Meyer saw it coming. And uh, easy call, that's the rule. And we used to tell our kids, it's either us or them. If they want to drive out of control, we'll, we, we will oblige and take the charge. If they take the charge, we'll jump, stop, and pivot. That's the rule. Until they change the rule, that's called a charge. So hand spinning on arms, lost the handle, and Warren now. Maybe on Warren feed down low, and the shot was blocked with a foul. So Bryson Williams will go to the line. Baylor by eight. A reminder on Saturday, ABC, former Red Raider head coach Chris Beard at number 20, Texas. Playing host to number 11, Texas Tech. That's at the Irwin Center in Austin. Red Raiders 
Won the first matchup February 1st, 77-64. Coverage starts 12.30 Eastern. Franchise, you and I will be there. Yeah, I can't wait. Tubby Smith is retired today, by the way, speaking of former Texas Tech head coaches. One he's of at them. High Point? Yeah, he's at High Point, his alma mater. Tubby's had an amazing coaching career, head coach at, oh, let's see, Tulsa, Georgia, Kentucky, Minnesota, Texas Tech, Memphis, where they paid him well, not to coach very much. Thank you very much. Took care of his retirement there at Memphis and then finished at High Point. And we wish Tubby the best. He's one of the class men and really left behind the beginning of what Chris Beard built here. Yep. With guys like Keenan Evans and, and some really other good players. He's the class man. Bryson Williams with a dozen. Baylor has been hot of late. And six of seven. Brown and a turnover. Out of control right there. Arms at the basket and he's fouled. Adonis Arms does a terrific job of just taking his body right into the defense. He's a solid six foot six. I mentioned it earlier, one of the things that Texas Tech does well, they get to the line. They just don't shoot it that well, about 69%. For Baylor, by the way, being under man, who mentioned no Jonathan Chalmachachua for the rest of the year. Zach Loveday has checked into the game. Right, seven foot sophomore from Gallapolis, Ohio. Southeastern Ohio, home of Bob Evans Restaurants. Just a little known piece of trivia there. Akinjo crossover in a three, in and out, loose ball, and Nadolny has it. Good looking shot by James. He's been aggressive and he needs to be. He's had a good first half. Playing with confidence. Got a mismatch inside. They can't find Bryson Williams. And the Dolby gets fouled. He took one across the head and on the knee. We saw Clarence's career game, a brilliant game against Kansas at home early in the year. They were without both Shannon and McCullough. Nadoli, 17 points. He played a total of 360 minutes, John, in his first two seasons, and he's about to eclipse 360 minutes tonight. Young man from right outside of Paris. Can't hit that one. Loose ball. Fight for it. And Baylor comes away with it. They've got numbers if they push. Good recovery by the Red Raiders. Akenjo. And an open look at it. Wouldn't fall. Now arms the other way. Red Raiders trying to chip away at a six-point deficit, and they get Loveday on the foul. And Donis Arms has been extremely aggressive in this half. Ten double-figure games on the season. And again... Started his career at Mesa Community College in Phoenix. He had to try out for the team. Right. Then, after two years there, he went to Northwest Nazarene in Pampa, Idaho. Was a star there. Then sat out at Winthrop, played a year, as you mentioned, John. And this is amazing that he is starting on the 11th ranked team in the country. Tell you what, the Big 12 tournament is going to be an absolute war with Ooh. these two teams, Texas, Kansas. And be clear, if you mess around with a team like K-State or Oklahoma or Iowa State, well, yeah, you about, can lose. How about Iowa State is ninth in this league and they got eight quad one wins. They have as many quad one wins as any team in the country because of the brilliant non-conference and yet they find themselves at ninth right now. Good Dolny. Yep. And they get a Kinjo with the foul on arms. I don't think a Kinjo liked the call. Well, I thought Adolni got fouled first at midcourt, and they let that one go. But excellent effort. What's happened the last four or five possessions? They're trying to go cross court with those passes, but the Red Raiders are starting to smell those passes out. You see that? We talked early about how white, five white jerseys play on one side of the floor. 
But now that defense is baiting Baylor into those skips and shooting those passing lanes. Smart. I think if you're Scott Drew, you would love to get to the locker room with a lead, any kind. Yep. Texas Tech, 13 of 17 from the line, so shooting pretty good from the stripe. Baylor by four, 114 to go first half, time out on the court. Back here in Lubbock, James Akinjo, a guy that has really, when healthy, been the energizer for their offense. Very much so, John. He had a donut at Kansas in the blowout by the Jayhawks. Last two games, 15 points, nearly eight assists. And we're talking about a guy that is maybe the most impactful Juco transfer in this league. There have been some good ones, obviously, Bryson Williams and Isaiah Brockington uh, lead the way. Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen. But when healthy, to your point, he is a dynamic floor general and perfect for a team that lost three great players to the NBA. Kinjo started his career at Georgetown, was the Big East freshman of the year, and then last year all Pac-12. 3-2 zone by Texas Tech. Now they worked on this today. Meyer yep. buries it. And I don't think Scott Drew worked on Meyer shooting a 25-footer, but he will absolutely take that. Santo Silva kick out. Maybe on Warren. Short track down by Flagler. See if Tech gets out of that zone. They've gone man. One possession of zone. Baylor hit a three. Back to man to man. Watch the help. Watch those white jerseys. Shot clock under 10. Akinjo on the bigger Adonis arms. Akinjo lost the ball. Up ahead. Loose ball. Santo Silva up ahead. Nice catch. Oh, Nadoni and Bamba gets fouled hard. Yes, Flo was behind the play. And once Baylor came up with that ball, I think it was Kendall Brown who made that pass up the court. Let's take a look right here. They win lob Texas Tech. And that did not work. And you see Flo Thomba with the catch, the foul by Nadoni. They're going to take a look to see if this will be a flagrant one. Was he playing the ball? Yeah, part of what took place yeah, on that play, too, is Nadolny kind of losing his footing. Now, Nadolny's got to play the ball here. Yeah, I think because he lost his balance, you're, that's and the right hand exactly, was yep, at the ball. Easy, easy call. Yep. Clarence, a tough kid, not a dirty player by any means. Yep. And he'll make Flo Thamba shoot at 4.8, John. So Tech's got to advance this ball quickly. So Thamba at the line. Flo Thamba will shoot two. One percent free throw shooter. Gets the first. This guy started every game of the national championship season a year ago. We watched him get better and better. And I mentioned first double double of his career on Saturday versus Texas in a 30 minute performance. One out of two, loose ball. Yeah, the first half comes to a close. Number seven, Baylor on the road and leading this one by seven. It's 39-32, and Scott Drew's team went leading at the half 
over the course of the last five years, 92 and 6. 39 32, our score at the break. Time now for the halftime report. Kevin Connor, Sean Farnham, Seth Greenberg. <laughs> Back in Lubbock, we get ready for second half action. Red Panda in the house. Baylor leading this one by seven. Welcome courtside, John Shambi and Fran Fraschilla. Pair of top 11 teams squaring off in this one. For Baylor, no Jonathan Chamwachachua. And so other guys needing to step up. And we take a look at how well the Baylor Bears stepped up in Jonathan Chamwachachua's absence. And we take a look at our net gains tonight, brought to you by SoFi. All right, look at the minutes, points, and rebounds from that group, Fran. Yeah, we said it before the game. Each of these guys would have to play an average of five more minutes. You know, each per game because John played 20 minutes a game and they're the number seven team in the country for a reason John It's not just one player and not only have these guys played well, but they got LJ Cryer back tonight on a minutes restriction They've got Flagler back akinjo has been outstanding and they've held Texas Tech to 33% well, I mean Baylor one of those teams that you find in the adjusted efficiency rankings, both offensively and defensively, one of the top teams out there. Last I checked, there were seven teams in the top 25 in both, which puts you in a position to make a very deep NCAA run. One of the things I found interesting, Gonzaga has put together, at least in terms of adjusted defensive efficiency, a really nice season at that end. That's not what they're known for. They've got, they're not known for a seven foot one shot blocker either. Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. Bryson Williams, baseline, pull up, wouldn't go. Good rebound by O'Banner. Powers his way in, and out of bounds, it'll stay with Texas now, Tech. If you are Mark Adams, you must go inside and attack this Baylor defense. Brown, Thamba, and Meyer, excuse me, not Meyer, but the Brown and Thamba both have two fouls each, as does Sohan, who's not in the game right now. Maybe on Warren. O'Banner oh, had it knocked away and into the hands of Akinjo. Baylor shot 50% in the first half, and that's something that does not make Mark Adams happy. This is an outstanding defensive team. Good shot. He's not going to miss that very often. Good look. Remember Terrence Shannon, two fouls in the first half, five points. And he's a guy that can put points on the board for this Texas Tech team. Texas Tech's last field goal was at the 6.59 mark of the first half by Adonis Arms. So it's, it's been a bit. Shannon ends that round. They need him to have a big second half. Remember, he's missed 11 games this season. Early in the year, with some NCAA certification issues because he tested the waters in the NBA, most recently an injury. Bounds, and it goes back to Texas Tech. Terrence Shannon, young man out of Chicago, Illinois, not heavily recruited until he went to IMG Academy down in Florida. And there he bangs the three, something he worked on in the off season. Scott Drew knows TJ Shannon will be a handful. Shannon's injury that caused him to miss a big chunk of time is actually a back problem. Lately, the knee has been bothering him. You can see him wearing two sleeves on that right knee, a black one and then over it a white sleeve. For two is Nadoni, and he's fouled. He drives the open post, and I think that might be Kendall Brown's third. They spread you out, they get downhill, nobody in the post, and Nadoni with a little French pastry off the glass. 
People count on Spectrum to keep them connected to what matters most. Back here in Lubbock, John Shambi, Fran for Schilla and Texas Tech within 2, 1803 to go here. Second half, Clarence Dendolny at the line and take a peek at bracketology. Joe Lodarni right now, Kansas a one seed, Baylor a two seed. Texas Tech a four, but a win tonight. And Joe Lenardi saying that Texas Tech would move to the two line. Well, remember, they've had some terrific out of conference wins. They played a tough schedule, beat Tennessee in the garden. And all of a sudden, that, what is that, John, a 6 0 run to start the half? Can't do that. Told you. Shot wouldn't go for Shannon, put back with neither. And Baylor the other way. Baylor's throwing those cross court passes, which was a good idea early, but not now. And that's a big shot for Adam Flagler. I saw Flagler and Akinjo, as did you on Saturday, John, start to get their mojo back. And they'll, we'll see some LJ Cryer as well. You talk about a big shot at the right time. Quiet at this place down in a hurry. The goal to Williams. Meyer comes to help. That one pulled away. Shot clock is at six. Shannon looking for some space. TJ Shannon. Shot clock winding down. Fade away. And arms the rebound. And he gets fouled. And down his arms to the line. He'll shoot two. Well, you got to be careful against these real good help defenses. When you do throw that cross court pass, you better be sure. But there's a good look by. Matthew Meyer knocking that, knocking that uh, look out to Flagler. And John, I think, is that Flo Thomba's third as well? Yes, it is. Yep. So Brown has three. He's coming out. Sohan in. Thomba stays in. But this is where it gets precarious for Baylor, not just tonight, but during the season without John. Chamwachachua is foul trouble. Yep, 17 minutes to go in the game, and we'll see how Scott Drew plays it. Will we see some more Zach Loveday? I think we'll see some four guards if necessary. Not afraid to do that in the past. Got his arms with 11. This guy, Santos Silva, is so good guarding guards. Loose ball, Meyer. Arms grabs it. Here comes Texas Tech. Red Raiders can tie it with a two, take the lead with a three. Push, flip back, fire. Quick shot. Out of bounds, and they're going to say Baylor basketball. Yeah, a little scrum right by us, and I think Thamba knocked that ball off of Bryson Williams. Long rebound. Both teams hustling. And. Let's watch Mo Thamba right here. Oh wow, he grabbed uh, Price and Williams' uh, leg and they didn't see it. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a foul. I think so. Yeah, it's either that or it's Thanksgiving. Well, you know, when you, when you get the turkey with the, the wishbone. The wishbone, yeah. I'm here to help. Don't yeah, I know. I'm just, every now and then I get stuck on my words. <laughs> Rarely, but on occasion. Watch them shrink the floor. White shirts everywhere. So handle try. Short. Bamba tracks it down. Kinjo looking for some space. Beat inside. So hand found it. The freshman will go to the line. 
15-38 to go. We got a good one here in Lubbock. And Baylor on the road leading by two. Well, more college basketball coming your way back here in Lubbock. But on Saturday, our coverage starts at noon. And then the final three games, it starts Saturday at 6 Eastern, Florida State and Duke. And then after that, Kansas in Morgantown, number 16 in the country, will take on West Virginia in the finale. Number three, Arizona hosting Oregon in our West Coast primetime game. What a day of basketball he is again. And the act. Patrick Mahomes in the house and taking this one in is Sohan. I wouldn't say just taking it in. I'd no, say actively been, involved. He's been active. Yep. He told us a little while ago he was texting with former Baylor basketball star Mike Mark Vidal, who's now a tight end with the Kansas City Chiefs on the practice squad. I have a feeling a little junk was talked. Back the other way, Red Raiders down a couple. I see a little zone here from Baylor. 1-1-3. One, one, and a three, and the Red Raiders have the lead. That's his real estate. O'Banner loves the corner three. Great penetration and kick. Nadoli's been a big lift. Patrick Mahomes absolutely loving it. Cryer. Match inside. Foul. At that end. Kevin O'Banner, last year at ORU, he averaged 18 and 10, but he can really shoot the three ball and watch him get his feet set. Perfect follow through for the young man from Houston. And this guy loves it. <laughs> Think he's not into it? Pretty excited. He's been bouncing up and down. Shannon handling here. And another. 46 42. And they get the foul this time. On to Dolmy. There it is again. Watch that ball movement. O'Banner corner three. This is a guy that went absolutely nuts in the NCAA tournament for ORU last year, toasting the likes of Ohio State and others before transferring to Tech. Shoots a 31% clip from three, but he is hit. Two huge threes in this one, and the Red Raiders at home and with the lead. Akinjo gets that one. When James Akinjo is healthy, for Baylor, he is just a crucial, crucial piece. Very much so, because he can score and he gets into the paint and causes havoc by breaking those defenses down. It's what he did at Arizona last year for Sean Miller. He can shoot it. Bryson Williams straight on. That one saved, but Thamba comes up with it. Right back to the corner, they had him. Lagler step back. In and out, Thamba rebound. And Flo Thamba will go to the line. Well, this guy does not get a lot of credit, but statistically, Ken Palm numbers, he's an outstanding offensive rebounder. Flo Thamba going about 6'10, 250. Got yep. that 7'5 wingspan. Yeah. See it come into play. We watched him get better, John. Over time. So 
One point game, 13.57 to go. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilli here in Lubbock. United Supermarkets Arena. Red Raiders still lead it by a point. Janet at the basket. And a two-handed stun. He can be a difference maker. Downhill, left-hand drive, hard to stop. Atmosphere has changed dramatically in this building. Bamba with a huge rebound. Watch how much room Terrence Shannon has on this play. They break the defense down. A lot of room, dribble handoff. And what really nice, he rejects the ball screen. Akinjo thought he was going to use the screen. He rejected it and drove the open space. Cryer. Kenjo going to work, gets inside. Thamba is blocked. And Thamba will go to the line and shoot two. What Baylor did there, they dribble weaved out top with the three guards. And when Akinjo got the ball, he had O'Banner on him. A good, not great defender was able to beat O'Banner and drop it off to Thamba. Take a look right here. The big fella's out on the court. Trying to stay in front, hard to do. And Thomas going to shoot two. The foul, I believe, was actually, if you took a quick look at it, was on Malik Wilson on the rake across the arm as he went inside. Missed them both. Warren tracks it down. Bears racing ahead, and Akinjo shoved from behind, and the foul on Texas Tech, and that will be on Marcus Santos Silva. I would say James Akinjo, based on what we saw today at the uh, foul line, at, at shoot around today, looks pretty good, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And again, the tailbone was the issue early in the year. More of a foot problem, ankle issue today. Prior to Flagler. And arms, that shot might have gotten deflected just yeah. a tiny bit. My, Malik Wilson, I thought, got a fingertip on that. Change the trajectory of the shot. And O'Banner making quite an impact. You know what's crazy about O'Banner? He missed his last nine threes before those couple in the corner, and now he's red hot. O'Banner's got 10. Baylor ice cold right now. They've missed seven straight shots. Seven at the break, but what a flurry in the second half by the Red Raiders. Absolutely. Kevin O'Banner knocking down corner shots. Ball movement. 18 to 6 run by the Red Raiders. Terrence Shannon back looking pretty healthy. And this guy has been a major cheerleader tonight from courtside. The great Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Kevin O'Banner, John. 
He had 10 points in his last three games. He was 0 for 9. He's got a double double tonight. Loose ball. Speed inside. Akinjo comes away with it. Speeding up ahead. And he spelled that pass out perfectly from arms. Tech's defense has tightened up, switching in all five spots. Other than Akinjo, the ball's not getting to the paint easily. Good look as Akinjo finds Meyer. Well, that's what he's done all night long. He probes, he beats the defenders, and he makes a second defender play you and puts your defense in a bad way. Banner, 10 points and 10 rebounds. He's got eight of his 10 in the second half. Arms. Out of bounds, it stays with Texas Tech. Well, a reminder, Sunday afternoon, some of the top teams in the American Conference are featured in our men's basketball doubleheader. Number 14, Houston, going up against Wichita State at 1 Eastern, and then Penny Hardaway in Memphis. They've won six straight. They score off against SMU in Dallas. Well, they counted that goal on the drive. And we had a difficult angle because we have some superstars standing up. Let's take a look at this on the replay. There's a drive. That's close, and I think he was there. It's You know, the problem with that call is in the NBA, you are, they count the gather once you pick it up. You don't have to be in the air yet. That's when the defender must be legal. In college, it's when the offensive player leaves his feet. It's a very hard call. I thought that was a charge. Bryson Williams with 14 points. And Tech in front by six. And a foul on the floor. So difficult to keep. Akinjo in front. Well, and the good news for Baylor is he looks like he's moving well. John, this is so quintessential Texas Tech. This is, you know, they don't have a go-to guy. Willie Williams, the closest thing. But it's done by committee on both ends of the floor. Nadolny, O'Banner, Arms. I think what's amazing is, I mean, just you and I, we've done games where... O'Banner is impacted significant way. Shannon has. Williams has. McCuller has. Lawrence has. You know what I mean? They've, yeah. had, they've had guys step up and be the big time player. They've gotten help from all over. And Baylor really has that also. Yeah, remember Bryson Williams at Allen Fieldhouse in that double overtime game? Probably one of the best college games of the year we had a chance to call. He was absolutely unstoppable. That's a guy that Bill Self does not want to see in the Big 12 tournament because the guy's averaging 25 in three games against him. So Kenjo with 13 now. Well, what's at stake here for Baylor? A win. It'd be their seventh road win against a ranked opponent in the last three seasons, the most in D1 for Texas Tech. Try to sweep Baylor for the first time since 04 05. Bob Knight was coaching here. Wow. Good. In the job. corner and yeah. arms. And Sohan rebound. Nice pass. And then the other thing, as we mentioned, Joe Lenardi saying if Texas Tech were to win this game, they'd become a two seed. Lagler from the free throw line got it. And all of a sudden, it's a two point game. Baylor just hanging around right now. They controlled the first half. Texas Tech definitely controlled the first 10 minutes of the second half. And now we got what we thought we would get, John, which is just good old-fashioned hand-to-hand combat. Nice. Inside arms. And look who's there. O'Banner, the putback and one, and he'll go to the line. Well, he's already got his 31st double-double of his career. And Arms did everything to get this ball on the rim. And as we see so often, nobody blocks out anymore. And watch O'Banner. Arms is fighting, fighting, fighting. And here comes O'Banner down the lane. Strongman move. 
Nobody blocks out anymore. No, nobody, nobody blocks out anymore. It's a lost art. Great second half for Kevin O'Banner. Kid from Houston, transfer from Oral Roberts. Inside had it ripped away. This is Raiders by five. This is a unique offense because they basically play with small forwards and power forwards. And they got so many guys that can play inside. Look at that. Oh. Oh. That's six six right there. That's a linebacker getting to the basket. Pat Mahomes likes that. Akinjo from way deep. And then on the half court, this end, they just put you in a meat grinder. The average length of these guys out there right now goes about six foot. Look at that size. O'Banner. Got him! What a night he has put together. 16 points. Patrick Mahomes loving it. The lead is 10. Spectrum Business Internet and Phone are built to meet the needs of your business. You need fast speeds to keep up with all the new ways you're interacting with customers. And we get that you need low prices to keep costs down. No business wants to be locked into a contract, so we don't have them. Choose Spectrum Business, the best internet and phone with fast starting speeds at a great low price, all without ever signing a contract. Get what 37 against 37 Texas. against Texas, and oh. it's almost like he's invisible. Off the glass wouldn't fall, and a foul. And a Texas Tech team that shot 33 percent in the first half has locked down Baylor and has opened this up four and double figures now for Tech, and the defense has been stifling. Tech has done it with second chance points, a 19-7 advantage. Thamba comes up with that last foul. It's his fourth. And right now, Baylor's in the jackpot. Down 10, eight to go. And you don't see much zone for Baylor anymore ever since they went man-to-man -man four years ago. But they're going to try it here to change a little bit of this tempo. O'Banner, another three. Whoa! Oh! His fourth of the half. Kevin O'Banner with 19 points to go along with a dozen rebounds. He missed his last nine threes coming into this game. As soon as it hit the rim the first time, John, it had a shot. Take a look. Shot clock running down, shot fake. Watch it hit the rim. Wow. Soft touch. Beautiful. What a night. Well, we got a lot of basketball left, but uh, what's Texas Tech got this weekend? Anything interesting? Well, they're heading to Austin and we'll be there. Woo! You know, the parlor game being played around the Big 12 right now is how many tickets 
have Red Raider fans somehow got for the game in Austin. Yeah, yeah. 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 I got to think it's a sellout. I'm going to say a rebound. I'm going to say 6,000 of the 16. Sohan puts it in. So Jeremy Sohan, the freshman. And I like the zone. I know that I know that uh, O'Banner's red hot, but I think you got to take your chances with the zone and change it up a little bit. Baylor needs some stops. O'Banner almost turned it over. So hand up ahead, Brown and the stuff. Wow, wow. catch. Holy cow. Yeah. And he had his shoulders over the rim on that one, Kendall Brown. It's eight. Need some stops if you're Baylor. And if you're Texas Tech, you can't stop looking to score. Texas Tech calling time as Mark Adams had brought in Chibuzo Agbo. Take a look at this, John. You talk about a young athlete, 18 years old, two of them hooking up right there. Woo! Elevation. It's like Dr. J. You know who Dr. J is? I, I am familiar with Julius Irving, but okay. that's like, I mean, that, that looked like his time as a, as a, a net, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like an eight foot rim. So, eight point game. A reminder Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must have for Big 12 fans. Tomorrow, go all access with the Baylor men's and women's basketball teams. The documentary series Our Time gives you an unprecedented behind the scenes look at both programs with never before seen footage and sound for players and coaches. You can always watch previous episodes streaming on ESPN Plus. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. And obviously a great slate of basketball. And those are our associate announcers here tonight. Aspiring. We got a chance to visit with them. They were in awe of you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that's how I would describe it, but it, it was fun to meet him. Inside O'Banner, two more. He's getting bored out on the three-point line. That's right. Yeah. What a second half. 19 points here in the second half. Sohan. The batter's got 21. Bamba lost it. Out of bounds. Texas Tech basketball. Wow. What a pass by Sohan. Bamba just couldn't get it up the rim. These, uh, these Red Raiders have been all over that Baylor offense in the second half. Swarming, and why not? They're the number three defensive team in the country in Ken Palm efficiency. I, John, I keep saying this, what I love about this Texas te Tech team, there's no entitlement. Most of these kids you never heard of if you're just a casual college basketball fan. Take it away if Flagler has it. Nope. Wow. Nope. That's a shot fake, bro. Shannon yep. closing in. <laughs> yep. First of all, Dale Bonner, as much as we love that he's playing a lot, is not a great shooter. And that's a shot fake. That's, uh, that's a little pro tip right there. He needs the shot fake. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He will. Great closeout by uh, Shannon. TJ Shannon. Yep. Yeah. down the court. You know, I don't. I, I've said this before, and I know if you're. Oh boy. Wow. Wow, that was deep. Flagler from way downtown. This Texas Tech team reminds me of those 2000 Baltimore Ravens. Offense pretty good. The defense just absolutely smothering. Yep. Kabuzo Agbo. 
Yep, young man from San Diego. He doesn't play a lot. Really good shooter, only a sophomore. Getting a chance right now in a big spot. Crunch time and he's out there. That's a good sign. Sohan. Three one to go. Rebound arms. His, his arms just an amazing story, John. Guy had a tryout for his Juco team in Mesa, Arizona. And a feed inside, and Bryson Williams. Well, Baylor's gone zone, but it's not the zone you remember. Four or five years ago, they just threw that ball over the top. This is a locked-in Texas Tech team. Texas Tech leading it by 11. Mark Adams directing traffic from the sideline. Every time we see Mark Adams, we tell him, Coach, enjoy this. You know, he's, he's the guy that feels like it's going to end tomorrow. Sohan rebounds the miss. Texas Tech plus eight in the rebounding department. The Raiders trailed by seven at the half. Closing on three to go. Shannon. Well, they've gotten every loose ball, it seems, in the second half. Shot clock winding down. Shannon inside. Hands. Red Raiders in control here at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. He would get pushed around. Come on, are you kidding me? Oh, here we go. Unicorn talk. I'm in on it. Yeah, you know, I am too. I am too. He's playing fabulous basketball. When we saw him in the second game of the season, yeah. he had two points. That was the night Timmy had 37. And the one thing we loved about him is he didn't really seem like he cared that he wasn't getting shots. And now he's just been a dominant player in, uh, in uh, college basketball the last month. He's been unbelievable. We're kind of sitting next to a unicorn, by the way. The guy watching this game courtside. Yeah. Mr. Mahomes would fit into that category. Meyer eyeing it up. O'Banner on. Kinjo hesitating. And a lob and a throw down. Kendall Brown. I will say this, John, without Jonathan Chamuachachua. I saw I saw some flashes of great basketball tonight from Baylor and I would be optimistic if I were a Bears fan. There's still a lot of talent here. Yes. They'll get healthy. They obviously miss everyday John. They play hard though still, Fran. They, they do. do. Yep, they do. They, they didn't make shots. And the other thing is they cut into this lead is you're not going to count on Kevin O'Banner doing what he did. Give him credit. He made some big shots tonight when he'd been in a serious slump. Oh, 
Arms gets it to O'Banner. O'Banner, ball fake, reverses and puts it in. He wanted the foul. O'Banner with 23. Uh, he's been great. Hey, he has been since Cinemania. Oh, wow. I got I tell you, we said this at halftime. This would be a heck of a Big 12 semifinal. And yeah. Can't, this would be a heck, and it may happen, which would be a blast. Shannon. Yes. Bolts yep. to the basket, puts it in. He gives them a different dimension. The defense is going to be solid. They're trying to find different ways, different people to score. But when he's healthy, he is a big time slasher. 76 67 is our score. Kevin O'Banner in the second half, he had two points in the first half. And here in the second half, Kevin O'Banner has been huge for Mark Adams' team. Oh, no question. In the previous three games, Kevin O'Banner had a total of 10 points, 0 for 9 from 3. And you're right, John, the second half, he went haywire and basically single-handedly blew this game open for Mark Adams' club. So timeout, 118 to go. And how about this? His 31st career double-double, but his first with the Red Raiders, the transfer from Oral Roberts. His uh, career high is 39 at Omaha, played for ORU, and former Baylor assistant Paul Mills, who had that amazing run last year through the NCAA tournament. O'Banner was a big part of that. Crowd's been unbelievable, John. How about the how about the fan support in Lubbock? We've been here a few times already. No question. Andy. Yep. Enjoying a little. I want it that way. Patrick Mahomes has been a big time cheerleader. The whiteout here tonight has been in full effect. This is one of those barns now, Fran. You come into this place and you expect it to just be live. Absolutely. And the team plays with the same energy. Yeah. The great defense. The hustle. Diving into the stands for loose balls. Kinjo drills a three. It's a six-point game. That's yep, not over yet because they got athletes out there in that pressure. They go jump ball, possession arrow, and it belongs to Baylor. Wow. Two-possession game. Watch this now. Kinjo hits the three, and then they get the tie-up. And remember, they've got some shooters out there. Watch a Kinjo off a ball screen. Nobody picks him up. You don't see that kind of breakdown from Texas Tech. Bonner with O'Banner on him, Akinjo. Good look, Sohan, and he's fouled. Akinjo got the mismatch with the big out on the perimeter. Those guys usually do a good job of keeping those small guys in front, but Akinjo has been breaking that defense down all night. Mom and Dad looking on. Sohan puts it in. Let's send it back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. Thanks, foul on the other end, and Warren will go to the line, and Davion will shoot two. That might have been one where Davion could have dribbled it out, yeah. but he did pick up the foul. Bonner got in his way, stopped the easy basket. He'll force, force Davion to make a couple. This kid was the 13th leading scorer in the country last year. 21 points a game at, at Hampton. And that's a big miss. Another one of those kids that came out of nowhere. Bishop Tymon High School in Buffalo. Juco in Illinois, Hampton, and you think he doesn't mind getting on those charters with all that food in the Big 12. He's got to be loving it, and he plays hard. Push. 
mentioned Texas Tech is not a good free throw shooting team, but here tonight, 76%. That is better than their season. She gets one out of two. And watch Akinjo now. Give him a ball screen. He's going to probably get into the paint. Oh, oh. And a steal. Wilson puts it in, and that might be the dagger. Too much Akinjo turned it over. And Wilson stepped in the passing lane. And it ends up going the other way for two. That pass was like a changeup in baseball. Arms able to hang on to it. And a foul there. Watch how soft Akinjo throws this pass. And these guys are piranhas on defense. You can't do this. Look how soft that one hand pass is. Malik Wilson jumps in the lane. And you, like you said, John, that might have ended it. Watch how soft, easy to run through that passing lane. And a great effort by Texas Tech in the second half, John. I would not be disappointed if I were a Baylor fan. They're going to get used to playing without John Ch Jonathan Chamuchachua. The young kids were great early, not as good in the second half. Thamba was in foul trouble. But we've seen Akinjo and Flagler start to heat up. We know Cryer will. But what a matchup this has been. Between these Pretty two amazing teams. when you think about both these teams have been banged up this year, yes. and yet there's still so much talent. No question. Akinjo, high arcing shot, and that falls. Eight point game, 15.2 to go. Well, Texas Tech, today's Wednesday. They may take off tomorrow. They'll be on a flight to Austin on Friday. And we are going to see some fun on Saturday at 12.30 in the Irwin Center. Yeah, it's going to be intense. It's going to be amazing. Well, back February 1st, it was number 23 against number 14. And the fans... Saying hello to Chris Beard, made his way back into the arena. The blackout. Well, Banner knocks that one down. He had 17, five three-pointers. And the Red Raiders controlled that game most of the way, and they won it 77-64. I'll tell you, I mentioned earlier, Chris Beard left behind a residue of toughness in this program. You cannot deny that. He's trying to build that in Austin. And last night was a good example. In a game Oklahoma had to win, Texas was a little tougher in overtime coming on away the road. With a nice road win, absolutely. Yep. I've seen some, some flashes of toughness from Allen and Bishop. Andrew Jones has been terrific lately. Courtney Ramey. Kinjo fouls arms. Donna's arms to the line. 13 points, six for eight from the strike. About seven rebounds. All about Kevin O'Banner. 21 of his 23. And Arms knocks it down. Texas Tech, number 11 in the country at home. Mark Adams team picks up a win. 83-73, our final score.